Welcome to Global Risk Community Chat. Today, our guest is Ryan Moody. I'm very happy to have you here today, Ryan. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Yves. Yes. So before we get into the topic, can you briefly introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Um, I'm Ryan Moody. I'm president and CEO of ABS Group, um, where we, um, we help our clients manage and understand risk. And, uh, you know, that's everything from understanding uh, risk in operational environments such as offshore platforms and petrochemical facilities, really any major high hazard, high capital uh, industrial environment like a power plant or a water plant or a nuclear facility. Uh, we help our clients understand uh, and manage risk. And my background is really built uh, on understanding those operational environments as I started as an engineer uh, in the uh, oil and gas field working on uh, deep water oil and gas uh, projects. Thank you for sharing that. So with that being said, then let's get into the topic. What would you like to share with us today? Perfect. Um, I mean, I really think that one of the emerging risk areas that um, that really as a society and as companies who own and manage uh, operational facilities is uh, operational cybersecurity. And um, I think a lot of companies have a handle on cybersecurity today uh, when they think about their computers, their laptops, the, the computers that they run day-to-day -day business with, but often don't understand the cybersecurity risk um, that's inherent in their operational facilities, their plants, uh, everything from the industrial control systems that manage in a production facility that's making cars or drugs, or a water plant or a, a, a natural gas uh, power plant um, that's uh, providing uh, a, a critical uh, infrastructure type uh, service to um, to the to the to our entire economy. And um, when we talk about operational cybersecurity, what we really are talking about is um, a, a different type of cybersecurity. These industrial control systems that are in these plants that are helping operate these plants, um, they're often older legacy equipment. They're, they weren't really designed to be connected into networks, and they are today. Um, and so there's this uh, risk where these, these uh, industrial controls um, have... Uh, vulnerabilities associated with them, where the consequence is really uh, danger to property, plant, uh, people, the environment, um, if these systems are uh, hacked um, or otherwise compromised by uh, cybersecurity uh, related issues. Thank you. And what are some more key things about it if we were to go a bit more depth in this? Sure. Um, I think that the, the, the most important thing to understand is that IT systems that you have today, the agents and scanning that you're doing uh, doesn't work in these industrial control environments. Um, and so from a governance perspective, uh, as a company, you, you might think, hey, we've got this covered. We have an I, we have an I, our IT department is managing our cybersecurity posture, um, but that often doesn't extend into these operational facilities. And operations typically doesn't have the tools at their disposal or the budget to deal with, um, you know, cy the cybersecurity threats that exist. And so um, at the heart of this is um, governance. At the heart of this is ownership of cybersecurity as, a, as an issue, uh, understanding that it does extend into operations as a risk um, and knowing that it, it probably has to be managed um, with ex explicit funding, explicit leadership, um, and intentionality uh, at, from the company to be able to address the issue. Thank you for that as well. So with that being said, I want to move on to our next question. And that is, if you were to share some takeaway points for our viewers, that especially on things that they can take, you know, maybe action or the first actions they can take, what would those be? Yeah, I, I think um, aside from leadership, which I think is, a, is an obvious starting point, because I don't think we're going to um, make progress on this issue um, if we don't have leadership on it within an organization. Um, I think the first step is um, having visibility into the network. So a lot, um, a lot of these organizations that have these industrial networks don't have a good sense of what's in the network, what's connected to what. Um, and from there, um, you're able to build an understanding of what vulnerabilities you have and how to patch them. But really, step one is visibility, 
which which means um, uh, an, an inventory of all of the uh, computer assets that are in these industrial control networks, what they do, what they're connected to. And then once you start to get good visibility, you'll find um, probably there's pieces of equipment or computers that are in there. You didn't know were there. You didn't know were connected. You'll find that certain networks that you, one of the words we use in cybersecurity is air gapping. You might think you have this group of computers that sit separate from everything else and it's protected by an air gap. It's not connected. What you might find out is that system's not actually air gap, that it has connections into other areas. And so you find all of that out through uh, a good um, scanning and inventory uh, to, that provides good visibility on um, these industrial um, networks. Yes, thank you for that as well. So I have one last question that is remaining, and that is how it is for you to be part of risk community? Because I know, of course, you are more on the cybersecurity or, you know, like operational risk end of things, but overall, how it is for you? Um, I mean, it's really important. I mean, our business as ABS Group stems out of an understanding of risk. We didn't, we're not a cybersecurity company um, from our origin. We're a risk management um, company from our origin. Um, most of our services, if you step back at 30,000 feet, really stem from um, in, in history. If you look back at major uh, industrial accidents, whether it's the Three Mile Island nuclear disaster or the Bhopal chemical disaster, there's this very repetitive cycle of um, something big happens, it's catastrophic, people get hurt, property is damaged, environment is damaged. And then usually there's a couple year cycle where um, regulators and industry groups will create rules and regulations that we have to follow. As a company, we help define what those are. We work with governments and, and industry bodies to help define them. And then we help companies stand those up, put those um, controls in place to make sure those types of things never happen again. Um, a lot of times that regulation follows from a major catastrophic incident. And what we try and do is look forward to what is the next major catastrophic event? How do we get ahead of it? How do we under build some expertise in that area? Which is why cybersecurity is really important for us. But our risk understanding and being part of a risk community here is really uh, uh, built on this understanding of what are the risks that, that exist in a petrochemical facility, in a power plant, um, everything from pressure containing vessels to understanding uh, barrier management, et cetera. And then um, our, approach in cyber is really built on that, built on a risk and understanding of what are the risks in those operational environments? How do we mitigate and control those risks? How do we manage that? Um, and uh, cybersecurity is just sort of the next or the, uh, you know, the most emerging um, threat, I think, from a risk standpoint to these operational environments. Thank you for that as well. And with that being said, today, well, our time for today is unfortunately over, but I want to thank you once again for joining us today, sharing your expertise, also talking about this important or rather also trending topic as well with us. I hope that our audience also takes some feedback from it to also implement as much as they can. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too.